so red, I wanted to ask you about your time in the movement and, um, and basically disengaging. What do you think were some of the very first seeds that were planted or, or instances that you can remember specifically that might have led to you reconsidering your, your choice of being in the movement? You know, uh, there are many seeds that were planted o- over time. Um, but one of the more prominent ones that uh, sticks out, and it's, it's one that I haven't really spoken out too much about um, why. Uh, sometimes I, I just simply forget to, that that part happened, you know. Um, but uh, it was in 2004, the, uh, Lincoln, Nebraska, in the state capital steps was my very first major rally. And um, I had been invited to speak. Uh, which was uh, at that time was a huge honor. I mean, here's a, here's a, uh, essentially a, a low level uh, foot soldier, if you will, uh, getting asked to speak at a major rally. I was like, holy shit. You know, I mean, I, I, that really put me on cloud nine at that moment, you know, I was, uh, but uh, you know, uh, from what I recall, we, we had been outside pretty near all day and it was, it was not a cold day by any means. It was rather hot. <laughs> and uh, I remember, uh, turning to go up the steps to uh, do whatever. And I remember kind of just kneeling down because I, I was exhausted and I was hot. I was tired. Uh, adrenaline dump uh, like crazy. You know, uh, I, I think, you know, how that is, uh, you know, uh, you get so amped up and all of a sudden it drains you, you know, and um, the state trooper uh, who was a black man uh, helped me up and helped me to a, a shady place where I could sit back and recline a little bit, you know, and get some cold water. And uh, I'm thanking him for doing this. Uh, you, you know, I'm, 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 that, that was one, one of the things I learned uh, early on in the movement, even if it is our opposition, always be respectful. Uh, unless that line was crossed, of course, and that was, that's a whole other uh, ball of wax. But uh, anyway, so I'm thanking him. And he looks me right in the eye and he goes, young man, you're better than this. You know that, right? And I looked at him. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to simply say thank you for helping me get some water. You got a job to do just like I do. Thank you. And I, I kind of left it at that because obviously I was going to challenge the guy. I mean, here's an armed law enforcement officer, and he was a little bit bigger than I was and I didn't feel like getting thrown into slammers that day, you know. Um, but, you know, that was uh, definitely a, a moment of uh, afterwards. It was like, shit, what the hell did he mean by that? You know, and it, it took uh, a good number of years to, for it to finally uh, click. But I definitely think that was something that uh, played into uh, me uh, opening up and seeing uh, the, the wrong in, in what I was doing and what I was promoting. Do you think like, and in, in, uh, in, in this is per, that's a pretty, uh, I mean, that's a great uh, example. And I think in, in a lot of people coming from all different sides, looking at a situation like that, I want to paint a picture here because I was at the rally too. Yeah. <laughs> it was a Nazi rally. All right. So there's right. a black officer that's, that's uh, showing a little bit of humanity to, to somebody that he saw that, that uh, needed a glass of water and, and treated you with kindness and right. that planted that seed. And I think that, uh, that says a whole lot. It, it really, it really does. Absolutely. Uh, that situation, uh, at any other time could have been much more uh, dangerous uh, for for all parties involved. Um, In my time in the movement, I had had run-ins with law enforcement and some of them were uh, uh, petty. And what I mean by that is I I flew a swastika flag, uh, the NSM flag from uh, from my pickup truck, from the bed of my truck. And I get pulled over constantly for it, you know, and they try to say, well, you're, you know, you're obstructing your view. And, you know, I, of course, I'm throwing right back at their faces what the law stated and whatnot. You know, of course, they didn't like that shit. And uh, I'll never forget the the one time that I actually mouthed off to the cop and I I met the tail end of his cop car. Uh, Rather hard. Uh, (laughs) He was uh, very unapologetic and unforgiving. Uh, I was, it was a white cop nonetheless. And, and in my head at the time, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? You know, but at the same, now looking back at it, it's like, oh shit, no wonder he did that to me. I was being a dick. Uh, you know, I mean, I was, 
I was really laying it on and egging him on. I, I you know, that typical uh, 10 foot tall and bulletproof mentality of, well, you ain't, you ain't nothing without your badge and gun, you know, and he offered to take it all off and go round and round with me. And I'm like, I, 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 once I met the trunk of the cop car, man, I, I knew I had to shut up because it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to get hurt. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, at, at the time I was maybe a buck 87 soaking wet, <laughs> you know, so I wasn't exactly the biggest guy in the world. But, um, you know, I, I think, uh, and, and I, I, can, I can speak for myself and, and possibly others, uh, and Jeff, I'll be asking uh, this question to you. Um, when I first got out, uh, I struggled. Um, you, you know, the, you, you definitely build a camaraderie. You definitely, um, you make those connections that were, it's, it's basically an, a second family, right? And um, I, I know that was one thing that I struggled with for, for a good number of years when I first left the movement was, man, I could just easily go back just to a different fashion or to a different branch, to a different organization, whatever, you know, and, and, and get that back. Um, you know, ultimately I found something to fill that void and that's, you know, was through firefighting and and other, um, uh, events and, and, and people that I started getting to know. So has, has that, has that been a challenge or, or has that thought ever crossed your mind as you transitioned out of the movement into, uh, speaking out against them? Well, you're right. Um, it's definitely a challenge uh, getting out. And, you know, the trajectory there is that uh, basically your entire support network, everyone, just about everybody, you know, and this is it's not just in my own story, but in, in it's pretty common for just about all of right. us that have been in these kind of extremist movements. Uh, whether it's far right, far left, uh, religious extremism, it operates so much. Um, I didn't like it at the time right. when I was in the movement, when people would say it's very cult-like and it's, it's very much cult-like and it's, right. and, uh, but in that sense, <clears throat> excuse me, in that sense, it's very much cult-like. It's very much uh, a huge part of your life. And most of the people you know, for some of the people, everybody they know is in it, the family right. and, and, and so on and so forth. So you have this, um, you're starting over, basically. You're starting over right. in so many aspects of your life. And uh, it's a challenge, but it's well worth it in, in every single Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you're involved in the movement, you 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 feel like you're you're basically at war with the world. Yes. Um, everybody around you, your your entire, uh, you know, you wake up every single day. You're, you know, fighting for the white race, or or you just have this this outlook where you're you're constantly on the defense. You're constantly battling battling something. It's not healthy. It's not a normal way to look at life. It's not a, it's not a healthy way to look at life. So when you get out, yes, it it can be a little bit of a struggle or an adjustment, but just as you had mentioned earlier, finding that, that thing to replace it, right. For you, it was firefighting for others. I know uh, guys that have went into the MMA, uh, you know, different, there's all kinds of different things. It it could be literally any, you could be joining a softball team. You know, that could could be it, Absolutely. you know, so for me, it was, um, at first, the, the first few months especially were really, really hard. Um, because that was the period of time where I call it my decompression period yes. where your brain is just, you're processing all those things from the past and you're, you're beating yourself up over it going, well, why did I do this? Right. How come I didn't see that? Why didn't I, uh, make this choice? And, and you're kind of, you know, berating yourself and, and you're carrying that guilt. Oh, yeah and all, all those different things. So when you, when, once you get past that, and of course, you know, we will always struggle with those different things time Absolutely. And time again, but dwelling on them or, or making that uh, dwelling on it too much, I think is, is unhealthy. It's not mentally healthy. Right. And, uh, focusing on that so for me, finding a, a, a new mission in life, uh, cause the movement was my mission. Obviously it was the right. wrong mission. Uh, it was really, right. really wrong mission, right. but, uh, doing the positive things that we do now with beyond barriers is a, is a new mission for me. And, and, uh, it's a 
something good. It, it actually helps people. It saves lives. It, it absolutely it does. prevents people from taking the path that we took. So right. Really happy. So, uh, while the sentiment is hilarious, uh, much like the song Nazi punks fuck off. I think it was uh, dead Kennedy's that sing it. Uh, to stoop to the level of a violent extremist and just to stoop to their level and become violent, perpetuating more violence, I, I think is an abhorrent idea. And, and quite frankly, it's, it's rather disgusting. Um, there are so many better and constructive ways to combat racism and hate and, 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 and extremism. And, and I, I like to think that we here at Beyond Barriers are, are a good example of how we're uh, combating, if you will, um, extremism of all kinds, not just white supremacy. And um, th that's a very beautiful question. Wow. Uh, I, I don't <laughs> think I, I have not yet had that question asked uh, to me. Um, but um, I, I don't advise anybody to, to engage in violence like that. Uh, not only are you harming somebody who you don't know, but you, you're, you're jeopardizing your own safety. And, and that's just not that's not cool, man. It's, it's not smart. It's not safe. It's just, you, you got to use some common sense. You really do. Great answer. And I, I agree with you a hundred percent. And I want to amplify that as well. No one has ever left the movement by getting punched in the face ever. <laughs> and what it does, it might feel good for a half a second when you do it, but um, as Red explained, it's, it's not in your best interest and you're not helping Right. You're not going to reach that person. What that's doing is pushing that person farther back into um, whatever form of extremism they're in, or that maybe that you never know, you know, what if, and, and I'm just going to pose this as a, uh, as a statement, but what if that was somebody, you know, we've left and a lot yeah. of, we've helped a lot of people leave and there's a lot Absolutely. of people that left before us as well. What if that was somebody that was on that fence that was struggling with, you know, maybe they shouldn't be involved in this anymore. Right. And then right. that happened. I can tell you how I would react to it. Well, right. first of all, I, I wouldn't just take it. Um, you know, it wouldn't yeah, be. Right. Best <laughs> Second of all, that would have further um, incensed me into my belief system. It would have, Absolutely. it was solidified that it would have strengthened the belief that, yes. Hey, I'm just out here doing whatever I'm doing, whether it's protesting or just walking down the street or whatever. And somebody came up and punched me. Oh, well, now for me, typically I would do twice as much um, in, in, a, yeah. in a response to that. It's dangerous. It but, is. It's and, very and dangerous. Stupid. It's stupid. Uh, yeah. You know, because, yeah, you're, 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 you're going to hurt somebody physically, but you don't know what you're doing to their psyche. And physical <laughs> wounds heal. Uh, but mental wounds, as, as most people know, are the absolute hardest to overcome. Uh, so here, here, here's a good question. I think for both of us and, and for really anybody who's been out for any amount of time, there, there's a disturbing trend in, in our current society where Everything from mathematics to our highway systems to classical music and composure to uh, driving a pickup truck is all considered white supremacy. It's all considered white supremacy. What is your take um, uh, on, on that particular uh, issue? That's a great question, by the way, Red. Um, this is uh, this type of thinking, I believe, is 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 extremist thought. Um, when you start accusing random things like math or, or inanimate objects or um, things of that nature of being white supremacy, black supremacy, Asian mm -hmm. supremacy, this sort of thing, I think you're, you've fallen down a, an extremist rabbit hole in sure. its own sense. And I, I know that there's different uh, schools of thought on this sort of thing. And I know that, or I, I understand, excuse me, um, what they're saying, but and, and that brings up another question um, and, and a thing I would like to cover as well, sure. like mm -hmm. where they, there's a term that they use called uh, dismantling whiteness. Mm. Okay, let's and this and this falls right in line with your question as well. Um, when you start using terms like that, and I I, I understand what they're saying, and I, I sure. understand that we're not we're not talking about that, but when right. you 
talk about when you use terms like that, that's going to trigger people. That's going to yes. trigger people that have never been in the movement, that right. have never even thought about joining a white supremacist movement. Right. We're not even racist in the first place. When they that feeds into the extremist narratives that yes. says, okay, if I'm white or whatever race is being targeted by such statements, or if I'm black, um, can you imagine if someone said, we're going to dismantle blackness? Sorry, the color of your skin is how you were born. You, right. you didn't have a choice in that, whether you were black, white, Asian, none of that shouldn't matter. Exactly. Um, we should not be focusing on, um, we should focus on our humanity. That's what we all have in common. And I think a exactly. lot of these a lot of these studies and a lot of these programs and things like that, that talk about things like that. I think the, um, for a number of the people that believe in that stuff, I think it's coming from a good place that they think sure. it's something positive. They think it's helpful and they think it's uplifting, but uplifting when you're uplifting people, all people should be uplifted. You, yes. you you're uplifting one or the other. It's really no, di I mean, the movement says they're uplifting white people and that's what it's all about. I mean, if right. you flip it on, you could flip that any way, any other way. And if you're specifically uplifting one group of people, whether, or one gender, I mean, we right. could, or one religion, uh, right. there's always people that are going to feel alienated. And I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I don't want to sure. get, I don't want to play that game. What right. I'm saying is this is how people feel. And when you start alienating, alienating people and you start leaving people out it adds to those grievances and there's i've i've heard it i know right. you have too yeah you know jeff i'd like to echo what you said uh, and really drive it home to folks that you know when you start throwing color into everything uh whether it's uh, you know uh, hatred for one race or, or what have you that that is the textbook definition of racism uh, really is in fact is uh, jeff you said it uh, better than uh, what most people will even uh, care to want to admit and that it's 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 an extremist rabbit hole so jeff uh, you, you know at beyond barriers we do a lot we reach out we, we do a lot of uh, different things whether it's uh live streaming podcasts to uh interviewing a, a variety of folks uh putting on uh, educational uh uh, forums, if you will, uh, you know, we, we speak to different organizations about why people join the movement, etc. If you were, if, if, if someone were to come to you right now and say, hey, you know what, I've been living this life for X amount of years. I see what you guys are doing. I love what you guys are doing. I'm ready to make that transition out of that life into something new. What would you recommend uh, not only to that person, but let's say they're, they're married or, or if they're close to their family, how, how would you, uh, or what would you recommend to them and maybe even to their family? Well, there, I mean, t as far as searching for something else that they could put their energies into. Yeah. Or, or like, so let's say they, maybe they don't want to become directly involved with beyond barriers, but they're ready to leave a uh, life of extremism and become a uh, quote unquote normal human being. That's a good question, and and that's and and that's something else that uh, I think we should uh, all right that I'd like to mention as well is most people, um, and this is for our listening audience. Most people, when they look at what we're doing and stuff, they think, well, only a few people. And I've had people say this to me. They said, well, not that many people do what you guys do. That not many people have left. And I, I always tell them, I said, I think you would be incredibly surprised how many people reach out to us and how many people have left very right. few of us as you know um but this is for the listening audience very few of us will speak out about it because right. it comes with its own baggage and its own stresses and 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 things like that and plus it's it's just as men it's just difficult to admit you were wrong and and talk right. about it and things like that so very few of us that are actually speaking out so most people when they leave to answer your question most people when they leave they're doing other things they're going back to normal life and and they're right. not doing what we do so right. um that could be a, a whole there's a whole uh, array of different things that they could put themselves into it could be it could be um you know, whatever, whatever keeps them busy, but, um, to lean on family, if, if your family's not involved, you know, if they're, uh, to get back involved with your family, to repair damaged relationships from before you were involved in the movement, 
um, making new friends. There's all kinds of uh, social things that people can do. You, uh, sure. There's things online and I'm not advertising for this particular thing, but there's something called meetup uh, or meetup.com or something like that, where you can see what local clubs and things are in your area. Mm -hmm. um, for example, uh, they have, <clears throat> excuse me, like, um, here in, in Detroit, they have things where you could go to different language uh, classes, like a French oh, wow. meetup or a Spanish meetup, Okay, uh, all different things. Or you could sure. have, go join a karate class or uh, uh, things like that. There's all different there's all different things where you can go out there and meet people. You could uh, join a church or, or get back involved in whatever your uh, preferred religion is. Sure. Uh, they have different uh, networks and supports and things like that. So putting your energy towards something that's positive, there, there's so, you, a person could volunteer and go uh, help feed the right. homeless or, or things like that too. There's, there's so many things a person could volunteer for. Um, there's just a, there's a million different things you could do besides being involved in the movement and you okay. will make new friends. You'll make new Absolutely. connections and it's not, your life isn't over. You're not, uh, um, I know a lot of people like to focus on the negative aspects and, and a lot of the people that reach out to us will say, well, do people really forgive you? Do people really let you move on and stuff? And the answer to that is, is yes. Uh, of course, there's always those, uh, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of a better word for a holes, so I'm not cussing on. But oh, I said, so we'll call them Klingons. <laughs> yeah, there's negative, just bad, you know, just crappy people. Absolutely, those people out there that that say, you know, once a Nazi, always a Nazi, or. Oh. Uh, and and you know what I found with just knowing people and in, in general, usually those people that are that negative that don't want to look look at somebody for who they are today right. instead of what they were in the past are not very happy people and they, and they have sure. pretty sad lives. And, and um, so instead of being angry at those type of people, I almost feel like pity for them, like feel sorry for them because sure. it, it isn't, it isn't easy always to change for people and, and uh, everybody's right. journey is a little different and some struggle more than others. But yeah. the, the good news is, is there's hope out there. There's help sure. out there. Absolutely. Worse. And uh, the world is really, you know, a good place. There's a lot of positive things you can do. How about, how about you? What would you suggest for, for people? You know, not, not just for the individual, but uh, this is speaking uh, directly to the families and, and to the loved ones of the individual or individuals leaving a life of extremism. I understand that you're going to be skeptic and that's okay. What's not okay is to discredit them or continue to bury them in their past, all right? People, uh, when someone is truly trying to change and become a better person, they are really seeking forgiveness, all right? And it is up to us as, as their loved ones to be there and be like, you know what? I may not have liked what you did or what you stood for, but you're my son, you're my daughter, you're my cousin, I love you, you're my son, you're my daughter, whatever the case may be. Um, I probably said that twice and I'm sorry, but uh, the, the fact of the matter is, is show some compassion, show some love. And um, no, it's not easy. They're going to struggle, right? But, you know, reassure them, hey, I'm here. You know, and, and one thing I definitely want to Jeff, you, you, you hit on a topic uh, that more especially for men, it's hard for us to reach out when we need help, all right? And, and I am a very, very strong advocate for, for mental health uh, uh, resources, all right? Um, in, in fact, for our listening audience, um, if you visit uh, uh, our website, www.beyondbarriersusa.org, uh, you can find my contact info, uh, as, as the outreach coordinator for Beyond Barriers, please email me and I will do my best to help you find resources in your community uh, for, for mental, mental health uh, issues and, and general health issues as well. Um, but don't be afraid to reach out. Uh, I have no uh, uh, embarrassment or, or shame in admitting that I've been seeing a counselor for a multitude of years and uh, I can say with 100% certainty, I would not be sitting in this uh, in this situation uh, talking to you guys uh, had it not been for my counselors. Uh, it has been 
a, a blessing in disguise. It really has. And, uh, you, you know, and if you don't want to talk to a counselor, there are those of us who have lived the life of extremism and we, we have ears we're willing to listen in to help you walk through uh, this, this transition in this journey. Uh, even if it wasn't the same exact uh, walk of life that we lived, you know what? We still understand extremism better than anybody who's only read about it because we lived it. We get it. So reach out. You know, it's okay. That's what we're here for, man. Well said. <clears throat> really well said. Everybody, I want to say on behalf of both myself and uh, the rest of the staff here at Beyond Barriers, I want to give a heartfelt uh, thank you for choosing to tune in tonight and, and to learn, uh, you know, this is nothing short of amazing what we do and we will continue to put out material like this, but we can't do it without you. All right. Uh, check out www.beyondbarriersusa.org through our website. You will find a multitude of things. You'll find out our mission statement. You'll get to know who we are as our team. There's different uh, news stories and articles that we post on there. there. And there's, of course, a media page that hosts links to our podcasts, okay? Not just the Beyond Barriers podcast, but Coffee and Conversation, which is done in conjunction with Underground Media. Also, hashtag the more you know. And both those last two podcasts that were just mentioned, you'll get to see this shining face uh, as a co-host uh, on a fairly regular basis. Um, we also have a contact page um, where you can reach out to us. Um, I want to reassure anybody who is choosing to reach out to us, your communications, your information, anything you share with us is secure and confidential. We understand the importance of privacy and it is a, one of the, our core values. So please be rest assured that you will not be exposed at any point uh, during uh, your interaction with us here at Beyond Barriers. Um, there is a donate tab. I know times are tough uh, during the pandemic for, for everybody. Uh, we would love to be able to continue to bring these shows, these podcasts, uh, these Q&A events and, and everything else. We would really love to be able to continue to bring them to you. Uh, but like anything else, you know, there, uh, unfortunately, there is costs that are incurred. Please know that any donation that you uh, are, are willing to give us is a tax deductible donation as we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, to those who, of you who are tuning in right now who uh, may be on the fence on whether or not to uh, leave uh, the, the, li the, the, the extremist side of life, I want to encourage you to reach out, okay? It, it, it is okay to speak up. It's okay to be heard. It is okay to want to change. And we're here. We, we are here for you. And I, I can't stress that enough. Uh, and if you're listening in and you are struggling with, with mental health, okay, um, there are uh, numerous ways to get that help. Okay. One of the big, one of the key numbers that I'm going to encourage you to call is 1-800-273-8255. That is a 24 hour, seven days a week, 365 days a year suicide prevention hotline. Okay. You can also call your local law enforcement agency or go to your nearest emergency department where they have trained staff on hand 24 seven to help you through the, 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 the raw moment in your life. Okay. Um, but again, uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain how Anchor is your one-stop shop for creating podcasts. It's free. Yes, you heard me correctly. Anchor is free. And there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will also distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more platforms. Do you like to make money? Well, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership required. Everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. If I may, what, uh, 
uh, and I'll, I'll answer this question myself and, and what led me into uh, joining the movement and such, but uh, yeah, what led Jeff into the, the arms of the movement? For me, it was um, a fascination from a very, very young age. Uh, my grandfather fought in, in the German army in world, during World War II, and my great uncles did as well. Um, my mother and family came over from Germany, and I, I want to preface that by saying they were not uh, supportive of me being involved in the movement. Sure. But it was this fascination from a very young age that I had with history. I'm still fascinated with history, but um, at this young age, I was fascinated with the German history, the Nazi, specifically the Nazi time period. Um, and that's sort of what what sent me down the path. Um, sure. you know, I don't want to play the blame has to be placed on the individual. You can't say, well, it's so-and-so's fault or so-and-so right, 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 right. drama or all, you know, there's all these different things that are triggers that can help people to join the movement. Um, but I don't want to place the blame on anybody. Certainly not on my sure. family members at all, but, um, that's what got me interested in it. So sure. I had this, this, uh, outlook where I was interested in it. I was fascinated by it. And unfortunately, that led to wanting to join it, wanting to be involved in it here in the United States. And, you know, that that was the original path for me. You know, now, for me, uh, I was just going to say, how about you? <laughs> you know, uh, honestly, it was rather similar, Jeff. Um, at a young age, I was very fascinated with history, still am. Um, history is, is a great teacher. Uh, there, there's no question. Um, like you, I, I had a strong fascination with World War II history. It was my favorite subject in school. Um, and uh, I did tend to side uh, with, the, with the Nazi party at the, at the time, uh, even though I knew nothing of what they were. It, was just, it seemed fascinating to me that one person had all this uh, power, if you will, that had all this uh, uh, stature, this grandeur, right? And uh, so when I, when, I, when I joined the movement full on, it was in the days of Yahoo Chat. So the internet was still not super young, but not as advanced as it is today. And uh, I, I did a quick search and uh, that's how I found the NSM specifically. And um, in my life, I've, I've made certain choices that prohibited certain activities. Uh, I wanted to be a Marine. And I was unable to, I was not qualified to, to be a Marine. And uh, so I started, uh, I started getting just pissed off at the world, really. I uh, wanted to blame everybody else for my problems, right? I wasn't ready to take uh, accountability. And uh, uh, the NSM painted a, uh, specifically painted a very pretty picture. You know, uh, they had that rank and structure, that military, the, the, the uniforms, the militaristic uh, feel. And uh, that, that was the biggest appeal for me is like, man, maybe this is it. Maybe this is where I and uh, for, for years, I, I believed that, you know, and uh, I, I was very active in trying to recruit people that were close to me, you know, um, and they, they fortunately, they, they saw through, through my bullshit. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I, You made a, a very valid point earlier, and I, I want to circle back to that about not dwelling on things. And uh, you know, for anyone that hears this, I, I hope that they they understand that it's okay to recall and to remember to reflect. It's not okay to to live there. Uh, if we forget our past, we're doomed to repeat it. And, and unfortunately, I, I see that happening uh, all throughout our our, our current uh, uh, current. Uh, Way of, ways of the world okay and uh it's it's unfortunate but um you know to to not reflect or to not remember they'd be asking like asking a recovering alcoholic to never crave alcohol ever again uh you, you know what i mean it's it's uh, but that's why we at beyond barriers are here because we can help you through that uh, you know um uh, i i feel like i've progressed more uh, in just a few short months, a couple short months than I have in the entire time I've been out because of the support that I have. I know I can come and speak uh, freely and, and voice concerns and, and things of that nature 
and I'm not going to be judged, but I'm going to be given insight as to different approaches to certain uh, certain sets of circumstances, you know, and how to approach it, how to look at it uh, from a different set of eyes, if you will, you know. So I think, oh, go I ahead. Was just, I was going to say, I think that's incredibly important because, um, and that's, that's really, uh, it's really awesome to hear too, because I think, um, I believe that having having a group like beyond barriers where there's people that have walked that path before and and alcoholism is a good example i mean it's obviously it's different but it's a good example so like an alcoholic um talking to someone um that's never had a drink in their life that person can't understand (laughs) what you know they can read about it all day long but having not been an alcoholic they might not understand it this is a um, a similar trajectory in what we do. And because, and I think that's why we're so successful at what we do and in, in reaching other people is because we have been there. We understand that. And, and um, getting together and having this support network, I think is, is incredibly important um, to, to work through those things. And, and you're right. Exactly what you were saying about uh, uh, not living in those, in those moments in the past, but you do have to process it. You know, there's a lot of people that, yes. uh, that think, you know, well, if I just don't think about it, then it, then it's not there. You know, it's, to, it's, to, to it's truly there. move on. You, you do have to face it. And, yep. um, uh, on a personal note, as somebody who has PTSD, uh, if I don't face my trauma, right, I'll never heal. And th- then I'm not good for myself, let alone anyone else. Uh, so, uh, as painful as it can be and as, as crappy as it can be, it's, it's encouraged, uh, you know. Um, so, Jeff, uh, you've been out, uh, I think you said, a couple of years now? Yep. In, in today's political climate, uh, there, there's extremes on, on both ends of, of the political spectrum. Uh, and that's very, it's been very out and uh, blatant, and shoved in our faces uh, via the media. Uh, have has that presented, uh, I, I guess, any issues on on your current mission to to uh, reach out and to to speak against extremism? Uh, you know, ha, ha, how has what's happening in our current uh, political climate affected or helped? Well. Um... We're looking at a we're in a situation right now in the country where extremism on both sides is 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 a problem. And I think what a lot of people a lot of people that even that work in the industry that that work on countering extremism, Mm -hmm. they make a big mistake by trying to pick sides in that and saying, you need to think this way. Like you need to think um, they're they're not being um, they're not they're not being nonpartisan. They're, right. they're pushing their own, their own side of things. And sure. I do think that's incredibly negative. It's incredibly harmful and mm-hmm. it's not going to, it's not going to help. If you're trying right. to reach somebody that's involved in this stuff and you're trying to get through to them and trying to help them understand by approaching them and telling them everything that they believe in is wrong. Right. For one, that's not going to work. Um, right. They have to, you can, what we do is, is we often we're showing them, alternative ways of looking at things sure that way the per- the individual is not saying like we're trying to force i don't try to force my beliefs on anyone else i'm right. trying to offer them a different perspective and they'll come i feel like most people will come to the conclusion and get to the place sure. that we're at if they allow right. themselves to see those see those things and and be able to process it so um, that's one of the biggest mistakes I think that a lot of people make is they're trying to kind of force their beliefs on somebody right. else or tell somebody that they're wrong or, or picking sides. I and mean, of course we all have our own opinions. You can be sure. on the right, you can be on the left, just right. don't jump into that extremist category where you're exactly, you know, doing violent things or, or, or saying things that are harmful to others, you know, right. I mean, either way, th- those are the way, those are the areas you need to stay away from. Um, but most of the country, most of us are somewhere in the middle. They might be right. sort of on the right or sort of on the left. That's okay. Just don't jump sure. over that extremist category. You're, you're not wrong. And, and uh, I can speak for myself uh, having conversation with uh, a, a few folks that are, that are uh, involved with us here at Beyond Barriers and having that open dialogue. Now, 
um, I, I, I believe that that open dialogue is something that will definitely help this country heal. You know, but like you said, uh, there's a lot of people that want to jump way far one way or way far to the other side. And, and realistically, that, that's, that's, it's, uh, it's detrimental. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, you, you know, the, w- any claims that one thing over another is racist or, or whatever the case may be, I, I think that's, that's toxic speech that needs to stop. Because really, it's inhibiting that open dialogue that uh, realistically can happen. Um, I know there's things that I agree with that other people don't, but we're able to speak about them freely to one another because there's that level of respect. And, uh, um, you, you know, and, and I think that's something as people come out of uh, any form of uh, extremism can definitely learn through us here at Beyond Barriers is uh, you know, how to approach or how to handle certain topics, uh, you know, and, and the best part is, is even if they're not sure, they, there's, there, we, we are a network, a mass uh, network of people that can be like, hey, you know, this is what has worked for me, or you know what, I heard from so-and-so, this is what worked for them here, let's get in contact with them, let's see what we can do to help you prepare for some of these situations, because unfortunately, uh, most of them are inevitable. Uh, you, you know, I've, I've a good question for you. Yeah. Ask away. Oh, so, um, a <laughs> lot of, a lot of people that, um, and this is, I think is one that, that a lot of people want to, want to, uh, hear how, how others think on it, you know? So, so we're talking a little bit about some of the wrong ways to approach, uh, to approach countering extremism. We talk a little bit about the right ways to approach it and dialogue, definitely is one of the right ways absolutely i've got i've got a really good one for you so (laughs) there's there's uh uh there's people that that uh you know it's it's a thing in the public where they say you know punch punch a nazi in the face you know that's that's a big thing Uh, what how how do you feel about that statement and um assuming you think it's a a bad idea uh why why is it bad or why is it good okay First and foremost, I will never condone any act of violence, period, okay? Having said that, if somebody wanted to assume that because I'm a shaven head white man that I'm, they automatically assume that I'm a Nazi and they decided to come try to punch me, I, I would obviously defend myself. It's not a smart idea because you don't know who's packing heat and who's not. I mean, that's a good way to get injured. And and why? Well, what's the point? Uh, I get it. You're disgusted with Nazism, and so am I. It's abhorrent. But why do you need to stoop to their level and be just as hateful and just as judgmental, thinking that that's going to do any good? What you're doing is you're furthering, you're adding fuel to their fire and driving that wedge of hate deeper. You're allowing them... uh, Essentially, you are giving them so much power over you that you're not accomplishing a damn thing, except for maybe some likes on social media, right? So... uh,